and bring in the Word of God. I got to tell you, you know what? I'm going to help you with this. God used a donkey to talk to Balaam, okay? And if he can use a donkey to talk to Balaam, he can use me to bring his word as well. Right? Thank you. Oh, that is so good. Let us stand for the reading of the word today. We're going to read out in Numbers 6, 24, and 26. Through 26, I should say. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let's pray. Lord God, we just come before you today. We come into this house for one reason, to lift up your name. For another reason, we come into this house, Lord, is to be fed your word, to be washed by your word. Oh, Lord, another reason we come into this house, Lord, is to just worship in song and truth. Wash by the word today, Lord, and bring us into your presence today, Father. In Jesus' name, I ask that you use this vessel, get Diane out of the way, and may you go. Probably my, my pop, probably, knowing me. Um, woo, I just ripped my Bible. Lord have mercy. Um, you're familiar with this because pastor, every week when he's done giving the sermon, he reads this to you, or he gives this blessing to you as a pastor's blessing. And... It's a powerful blessing. So you're, you're very familiar with the Lord bless you and keep you. But let me read the word well to you, what it says about this blessing. Because we, we need to take God's word serious, right? We need to apply God's word to our life. That's what it's all about, relationship. The Lord taught Moses how to speak blessing into the lives of others. Once again... Blessing is not something we do just when someone eats a meal or we sneeze. We release God's favor and power unto, into their lives to meet the situation that they are facing. Our power to speak blessing is considerable indeed. When Moses spoke blessing to Aaron and his sons and said, The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Moses was asking the very God of the universe to look with favor upon his people. And it's akin to a creative word that we speak. It, re it releases power, power from the invisible realm upon us, the blessed people of God. A couple of weeks ago, I shared a, word, or shared, shared a dream with the congregation of what the Lord had given me. And um, I'm going to share it again for those that might not have been here. The Lord showed me in a dream uh, that my husband and I own this furniture store. Okay, for those of you don't, that don't know, my husband went on to be with the Lord in glory. But we own this beautiful furniture store. And my husband called all his employees in. He had them sit down. And he told them, he says, I want you to write on a tag your name. And I want you to put that on any item in the store. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it costs. You just do that. And then he, he uh, had him come in and sit down. And he says, I'm going to, now this part was a little more fuzzy for me, but bear with me. I'm going to reward you it was like more immensely or greater than your usual pay. I'm going to pay you handsomely, basically. And when I woke up, I thought, what, what is that all about? Okay. And he began, the Lord began sharing with me that whatever the promises God's given to you, you can claim as your own. Isn't that good? 
You know what? That that is just so awesome. Second Corinthians one and twenty backs it up. What does he say? For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. In him are amen. To the glory of God through us. See those those promises don't work only work in us. They work through us to touch others around us. Okay? Now let me say something here. I am not a name it and claim it pastor or preacher or whatever you want to call me. Donkey, whatever. You know. I am I'm not a name it and claim it person. I don't believe I'm gonna tell walk up to the Lord and tell him, Oh, I want a boat, I want a house, I want a car. That's not what I believe. See, I believe the promises of God given to each one of us is so we can know the goodness of God. So we can know the character of God. Is that right? That's good. That we can learn that he loves us. He doesn't condemn us. He wants a relationship with us. That's what those promises, I believe, are for. Now, I may be wrong, but I, that's what I believe. Now, I get on a lot of rabbit trails, so you're going to have to bear with me, okay? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with putting, your, putting God in remembrance of his promises, of his word. It, actually, God tells us, put him in remembrance of his word. Is that right? He tells us to do that, but it's wrong when we go like little kids and demand it. <laughs> demand those blessings. I, I don't think that's right. I think we need to humbly come before the Lord, remind him of his word. This is what you said to us when it comes to his blessing. You know what I'm talking about. And if any of you have, have kids, <laughs> you ever tell a child that you're going to buy him something? You're going to take him something? You're going to take him somewhere special? Anybody ever did that with their kids? What happened? <laughs> when, right? How long do I got to wait, right? You said, right? Is that what, it, what your kids say to you? Well, you know what? I got to remind you of something. We act just like that to God, don't we? When? <laughs> We can learn a lot about receiving the blessings of God from our father, Abraham. You see, Abraham didn't tell God how to bless him. Abraham just received his, his blessing. But, let's look at Genesis 12, 1 and 3. If I can find it now that I ripped my Bible into. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to be crying about that. In Genesis, I know you're all familiar with these scriptures. You've all heard about Abraham's life, but let's let's glean from Abraham today. Let's glean how Abraham received the blessing, and let's apply it to our lives. Now, the Lord had said to Abram, Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a lane, land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will ma make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in all the families of the earth, and all the families, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Isn't that awesome? We hear a lot about Israel and how God bless, is, is blessing Israel and how Israel belongs to uh, Abraham and Abraham's seed. But do you realize that this blessing was given to Abraham when he was a Gentile. I don't know about you, but when I heard about, when I used to hear about Israel, and I used to almost pout at God. It's like, why do they get, you know, why, why not me, you know? <laughs> but God, or Abraham, I mean, he was a Gentile when he received this. It wasn't until later that he became Abraham and became a Jew. Isn't that funny? We are Gentiles, but when No, not right. Okay, maybe we need some light. All right, I'm all ready. Sorry. All right. So we need to 
we need to see how Abraham received the blessings from the Lord. In Genesis 12 and 1, the first thing that Abraham had to do was obey God, wasn't it? He said, get out of your country, away from your people, and I will bless you. And then he poured out a blessing on him. That was one of the first things that Abraham had to do. Sometimes we have a tendency to mm, walk past that obedience part. I know I do. Maybe you guys are special. I don't know. <laughs> and so we have to always obey what God tells us to obey. In James 2.23, we know that Abraham was referred to as a uh, friend of God. It says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then God called him his friend. I want to be God's friend. I know you do too. It wasn't because of his character or, how, or his integrity or how great he was. It was simply because he took God at his word and obeyed him. Now, you see this Bible. It's the Logos. The Logos is the written word of God. Abraham didn't have the written word of God. He only had the rhema of God, which is the spoken word of God. Today, we have both. We have the spoken word of God and the written word of God. Okay? And that's wonderful. But in, uh, when God was telling him, one of the times in Abraham's life, God was... God called him and uh, he, he gave him this wonderful blessing in Genesis 15, 1 through 6 is when God said to Abraham, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. We can have visions today, remember? What is it? Your old men shall dream dreams. Young, your mon young men shall have visions. So it depends if you're old or young. If you're young, you get a vision. If you're old like me, you get a dream. <laughs> so, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, God, what will you give me? Here we go to that kid thing again. Seems I go childless, and the, heir, and the heir in my house is Elzer of Damascus. When, then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one from born in my house, he is my heir. So he was referring to a servant. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your, offspring, your heir, but the one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought Abraham outside and he said, Look, now toward the heaven, and count the stars if you see, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and, he, and the Lord accounted to him for righteousness. Now, you know, the word of God doesn't want you to take anything out or put anything, add anything. But I think he allows us a little leeway when it comes to certain things. And I I allow me a little leeway here because I want to bring it into like a today's scenario. <laughs> okay. Um, I love this author that I, I listen or I read, read a lot. And what she does is she takes history and she, blend, and she brings in humanity. Okay. Through the, I call it history through the eyes of humanity. And what I'm saying is she'll, she'll write a book and it'll be historically correct, but then she brings in our human side of it. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So give me a little leeway here. So Abraham, I'm going to give you a scenario of how it might have went in Abraham's day. Abraham gets this word from the Lord that he's going to have an heir. Okay, so he goes home and like a good husband, he's all excited and he, he relays to Sarah, guess what, we're going to have kids. And Sarah's all excited because in those days, 
kids were to be childless was be to be have a curse on you. So you really wanted to have children. Not like today, they want to they want to kill the babies. Back then, they wanted to save the babies. I mean, they wanted babies. So here, Sarah's all excited, and guess what? It takes a while. How long is this going to take? The children say, right? And so, ding, Abraham, or not Abraham, but Sarah has an idea. Cling, cling, cling. Hey, Abraham, come here. So Abraham's like, okay. She goes, you know, I was thinking about that word God gave to you. And you know, he said through your loins, right? Yeah. Well, he didn't say anything about me. You can take my, my servant Hagar here, and we can have kids. Well, I think Abraham was probably a little excited about that, which probably kind of took Sarah off. But anyway, so they go and they make this mess of the word, right? Really wasn't a mess. Really, that's what, Abraham, that's what God said to Abraham, wasn't it? Wasn't that true? He said, out of your loins. He didn't say anything about you and Sarah, not until much later, when Abraham and Sarah were probably complaining how long is it going to take? You said, right? So, the Lord comes to Abraham when he was going to visit Sodom and Gomorrah, and he clarified to them that word. He says, no, it's going to come out of your loins and out of Sarah. And they both laughed. They both kind of thought, wow, you know, we would have done the same thing, wouldn't we? I mean, 100 years old? <laughs> really? <laughs> Please. So anyway, you kind of get the drift there, don't you? Of how it might have gone between, between Sarah and, and uh, Abraham. So, so anyway, here's the, the, on the side note, this is what I found was quite humorous because, uh, I'm sorry ladies, but we have a tendency to do this. Okay, so Sarah, Hagar gets pregnant, and what she do? She gets all haughty and puffed up about it because she's given Abraham a son and heir. Okay. Um, did I say Hagar, right? Sarah gets mad about it. And what does she do? She goes to Abraham, it's all your fault. <laughs> Can you men relate? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, ladies, but we do have a tendency to operate out of our emotions sometimes more than our, you know, of our spirit. So, but on the other hand, Abraham was the one that got the word. And so, he did say, well, Sarah, you know, he, you know, I just listened to what you had to say, and I apologize, so just do whatever you want to do with Hagar. And, uh, you know, he was trying to get out of the situation. You knew he was going to be on the couch that night. And uh, so anyway, Abraham had reasoned it out as well. But you got to admit, there was a loophole there, wasn't there? He did say, out of his loins, he didn't say, he didn't mention at that time Sarah's loins, so there was a loop here, loophole there. Well, what am I getting at? My point is, as we hear, we got to hear the rhema of God, the spoken word of God. And that's not always as easy as the written word of God. We have to have the written word of God, though, because we need to hide that in our heart. And we need to also be able to take that rhema, because if that rhema... That spoken word of God does not line up with that written word of God. What are we going to do with that? We better get rid of it, right? Well, I had a time in my life that, again, the Lord works with me in dreams. He also speaks to me in different ways, but I've heard rhema of God. Um, and I had a dream that I was going to go to Nigeria and preach. Now, none of you pastors not even heard this story. <laughs> and... Uh, I knew this minister. He invited me to Nigeria. I was supposed to go there and have uh, two weeks of crusades around Nigeria, preaching the word of God, the gospel. Just before I was to go, I got another dream that I shouldn't go. Well, I excused that real quick. thought, huh, just like the devil, he's going to knock me out of the race, right? Well, that ain't going to happen, so I'm going. So I got my stuff together and I went to Nigeria. I got to Nigeria, stepped off the plane. You know, when you get into these countries, they're not like ours, okay? 
you step off a plane in a third world country, they don't greet you with, well, welcome here. They greet you with machine guns. And you get in a line and you better do what they have to say. So I got in line and, well, apparently, I had made a colossal mistake on my passport. If you have a passport, it's green inside, isn't it? Well, the place where you, the, the authority in that country signs it, it's a sign here. So that country, Nigeria, signed it in a green pen. So Diane didn't see their signature. All Diane seen was sign here. So I signed over his signature. I know, put your glasses on, right? That's what I said. Anyway, so Diane got arrested. <laughs> and Diane got called a forgerer <laughs> in their language. And it was, it was uh, looking back, it, it could be humorous, but I wasn't laughing at the time. And as a matter of fact, if it hadn't been for the mercy and the grace of God, I'd probably be in a Nigerian prison to this day. But thank God for his mercy and his grace. I'll tell you what, I came home uh, just a few, few months ago. I had watched this program on Nigeria, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I would be dead because all the filth and everything. I, I, and if it's bad in the country, what do you think it's like in the prison? You know? So anyway, and bef you know, if you judge me, that's okay. I'm a woman. You know, I went to a foreign land. Uh, what was I thinking? Um, what I was thinking was I was trying to be obedient to God, and I missed it. But what I did was, when I came home, and it wasn't because of guilt, it was because of my own pride that I didn't hear God correctly. I ran just like Adam and Eve and hid from God for quite a while. I wouldn't even talk to him. <laughs> and, uh, but again, the good Lord is merciful, and he's wonderful. And what he had done, one day I was thinking about that whole trip again. You know, you can't believe how many times I beat myself up, the condemnation that came. Uh, but God, he was so good. And when I was thinking about it one day, he said to me, Diane, do you know how many people I've asked to go to Nigeria? And they didn't. At least you went. You know what that broke off of me? Yeah. All the condemnation. God is so good. God is so good. And he's, all the time he's good. But, you know, just like God didn't get mad at Sarah and Abraham for not getting it right, he went to them and again, before he went to Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to them and he told them specifically what he wanted. What, are you, what am I getting at? You know, you can't know the blessings of God unless you, you, you read this word. You can't hear the word of God or the rhema of God unless you're in his presence. As much as the blessings of God are great and good, oh, his presence is so much better. It's in his presence that we have joy. It's in his presence is where he helps us to figure things out in our lives. We all want to come into his presence. But there's things that we have, there's one thing that we have to do. We have to ask Christ into our heart. That's the first, first place. That makes us his children. Then we have to obey what he says, right? And, as, and we do that by the word. We can't drag our self before the Lord. We can drag, when we come into the presence of the Lord, I, I wanted to say, you can't come with your dirty diapers on, but that's not true. You, if you soiled your diaper, you better be in the presence of the Lord. 
Because the only one that can change you is Jesus. The only one that can change your heart is Jesus. Only one that can clean you up is Jesus. I don't know what you have in your lives. And I don't, I'm not to judge. I'm not your judge. The only judge we have is Jesus, right? But he wants us in his presence. He wants us to obey his word. You see, God wants a relationship with us. He's different than all those, those um, foreign gods. He died for us. He lives for us. Those foreign gods are dead. Some of them are dead. Some of them were never there. They're just, I don't even know why they talk to them. You know, it's like walking up to a wooden head and talking to it. But Moses, or God gave us this book, and he gave us the Ten Commandments to obey. We as children need to obey his commandments. You as a parent, if you have children, you give them rules. That's what the commandments are. Those are our rules. Okay? But, you know, we're flesh and blood. So sometimes, and, and this might have happened to you as a child, we get all messed up because our flesh and blood parents, with their rules, kind of mix us up in our heads because they might say, don't lie, and then they tell us to go answer the door and tell them you're not home. <laughs> right? It used to be the phone, but we can't do that now. We got it on our bodies. Um, and we're... We're flesh, and sometimes we're lazy, and so we might tell them to be quiet and go to the room because we don't want to deal with them. God's not like that at all. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we can't take our attributes and look at God and mess that up or mix that up. And we do that sometimes because... As children under fleshly parents, and in the world that we live in, which is evil, right? We get mixed feelings, or we get mixed signals, and we don't understand that as children. So when we come to the foot of the cross, sometimes we come there with a grudge against God because we've seen how our parents acted. And we carry that over to God. But that's not our God. That's why we need to know that word. Because we need to know those blessings that he has for us. Because those blessings tell us the character he has for us. He don't give us those commandments so that we have to strictly obey this or you're going to get punished, you know. The reason he gave us those commandments was for our benefit. Our God always loves us and wants to do for us good things for our benefit. We don't tell our kid not to run in the road because we don't want him playing in the road. We don't want him hit by a car, right? Well, God don't want us to commit adultery because he doesn't want us to have fun. He doesn't want your family destroyed. He doesn't want your peace stolen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, there's one thing that God wants more than anything else. He wants relationship. He wants you and I to come into the presence of God. You say, well, Diane, I don't understand the Holy Spirit. I mean, I don't understand the Word of God. Well, praise God. James 1, 5 through 8 says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and he'll give it to you. I, I would recommend you guys to go home. If you've got YouTube or even your phone, look up on YouTube. I'd like you to listen to Todd White. Okay? He's a 34-year-old man. And 
I'll give you some of his testimony. He never read a book in his life for 34 years. He wasn't able to read. He had ADHD. He had um, schizophrenia. He had all kinds of these problems that he couldn't pay attention. So he never read a book in his life until he read the Bible. And it was in Teen Challenge he was in. And he was in all kinds of trouble because I'll let you listen to his testimony. He, I mean, worst of the worst, you know. And uh, got into all kinds of trouble with the law, went to Teen Challenge. And he was so frustrated in Teen Challenge because he wasn't able to read the Word of God. And they were talking about things that he couldn't get through his head or even understand. In one of his testimonies, he was talking about, um, they were talking about trials. The word says, you know, count it all joy when you, when you have trials and tribulation, right? And I'm like, are you guys nuts? This is him. Are you guys crazy? What do you mean count it all joy? Are you crazy? Have you ever been in court? Have you ever gone to jail? How can I count that a blessing? You guys are nuts. And he just ran out of the ran out of the the group setting there, the little Bible study there. He ran out and he said he, he says, I gotta have a minute. And he ran up to his room and he, or to the prayer room and he's like, Oh my gosh, those guys are crazy. Oh my gosh, 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 gosh. I don't understand. What are, what are they talking about? You know? And he said, he didn't even really know how to read the word. He didn't. He said he, I just, you know, would flip it open, but I didn't know how to read it. And then but he said God had him focus on this one, one word, and he says he, he read it, and it was, if any man lack wisdom. He goes, oh my God, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing wisdom. Oh my gosh, I don't believe this. I don't have any wisdom. I don't, I don't have any wisdom. He just went nuts because he realized <laughs> that he didn't have wisdom. But see how... A little child can understand the Word of God. He just understood that much that he didn't have wisdom, that he didn't comprehend. But he said, he's seen that you could ask. If you don't understand something from God, you can ask. And he's not going to withhold it from you. He wants you to know him. If you're going through a situation in your life, he wants you to ask. And believe. Believe. Today we're going to do something different. You know, Pastor has been talking about revival in this place. He's believing God that revival is going to come to 831 Lincoln Avenue, to Lakeshore House of Prayer. Can you believe with, with our pastor? Hallelujah. I'm believing with pastor. But in order for that to happen, we must be a people of prayer. We must be obedient to his word. We must be a holy people. Now, don't get all wrapped up in that word holy. That means we must be a people that's willing to let God change us every day into his likeness. It says in his word, it's hard for me to wrap my head around this. It says in his word, he changes us from glory to glory. And what's the rest of it? into his likeness. He changes us, me, Diane Walters, you, from glory to glory into his likeness. Now we get that by the washing of the word and being obedient to the word. We don't just leave these seats, go out there and do whatever we want, come back next week, drag our, drag our ugly package with us. However, like I said before, God wants you to come into his presence. If you come with a dirty diaper, 
I'm just going to warn you, just don't come in your pride. Because those that come with a dirty diaper and run out of here, you still stink. And you're taking your stink with you. But those that come into the presence of God with a dirty diaper, he changes it. <laughs> That's right. Because we all had dirty diapers at one time, didn't we? Those that come into the presence of God, he changes that diaper and he gives you a clean one. What's it called? His righteousness. His holiness. That we can walk in righteousness before him. Is that right? Now this is where it's going to get different today. <laughs> uh, you can turn off the camera if you'd like. <laughs>